This week's episode of the Deck Journey Youngs podcast is brought to you by Strictly Come Dancing. Are you from Belfast? You like to attend private events? <laughs> and, and, you, <laughs> and you prefer to have your dancing involving come? Well then, go, go, <laughs> go to devonix.com forward slash what the fuck, boys? They have play the intro. Yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back uh, to the Deck Chair and Young's podcast with me. Deck chair. <laughs> I'm AKA Mickey Bartlett. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him all the blame for that. Uh yeah, no that y- Yums is here. Uh, we are very delighted to have uh, back with us for a second appearance, actually. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Andy McGibbon, Andy from the Bonnevilles, which is just gonna be on your tombstone, Andy from the Bonnevilles. <laughs> oh completely, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Very good. Thank that you. was you laughing in the background there. I don't I didn't tell you I was going to <laughs> No. <laughs> hot topics. Hot, hot topics, topics yeah. yeah. Uh, I was in Queens. Uh, in, in Mandela Hall last night doing the comedy club and yeah there was a few references now I must say oh I would say so I say I think the title will be down and out in that one for a wee while yet oh it was uh, yeah. I mean that's the well we'll talk about it I mean obviously I mean it's it, it, it was harm well I was going to say harmless but you know some of the, the like, outrage, some of the outrage the, the is outrage really was, yeah. it's really hypocritical I really yeah, fucking yeah. really like and I, I genuinely think like we are in a there, it's, it's a it's a moment where we do have to decide like we're always talking about this being too conservative and too backward. Mm. And if we let the, 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 the fucking, I was going to say, the, <laughs> if we let the ones clutch their pearl necklaces, but maybe that's not the thing we should be talking about. <laughs> maybe that's exactly what you want. If you go to a thing like maybe that. Maybe clutching their handbags, maybe. Um, <laughs> a wee pearl necklace. <laughs> if we had less of that. Or maybe, a big pearl necklace. Or a big pearl There was definitely the... <laughs> probably going to be a big pearl necklace. Um, yeah. I think maybe that we should, as I said on the stand-up last night, we should maybe invite them back right away, just to get, you know what I mean? 100%. Because if you let this faster, we'll end up just going backwards again. You're like well, then. The thing and about, that's not to say that that's progress <laughs> no, <laughs> anyway, but that's a progress of a sort, I suppose. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, everybody knew what it was going in. Yeah, surely. I mean, there's a, they didn't they didn't do anything that they don't that they weren't booked to do. No, I, I, well, I don't think so. The guy the guy was on uh, the radio with the <laughs> the ultimate irony of the outrage of Stephen Nolan talking about oh. Cox. Um, the yeah. yeah, it was it was uh, fascinating. But the guy came on, <laughs> the English guy who was organising the whole thing came on, and, and apparently, according to him, the only place in the UK and Ireland where the women come on the stage at the end was Belfast. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think there might have been a few stage uh, yeah in, invasions. Um, I don't know if there was any volunteers, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's it is as you say, it is what it is. Like it's uh, it's, I, I, it, it's as you say. I mean, it's the. It's the it's the full outrage. Mm. Oh, looks that it's it, you know everyone knew what these guys were. They did what they were paid to do. Yeah. Whether you like it or whether you're not, it's none of your goddamn business. If these people yeah. pay, if these people yeah. pay in to go and see that, and why wouldn't they? I was impressed. There were no there, there, there were there were there were big boys there. Sure. Which is, I shouldn't actually because they're called the UK Pleasure Boys, mm. and they were definitely not boys. No, there were no not big men. There. No. <laughs> there were a lot of yeah. And a lot of big um, members, shall we say? I'm, de- I'm absolutely, de- I'm absolutely <laughs> delighted to, to to say that my wife Janie has absolutely no idea about what been, what's been going on at the Devonish. <laughs> and yeah, I wouldn't want to give yeah, her. You want to hide it from the wife? Don't, I wouldn't want to give her false notions. Of yeah, don't don't let them know that they exist. No, no. <laughs> I says I actually says to the audience because it was on Twitter. It was away gigging and stuff. Yeah. So I, you know, hadn't been on top of these things, and and I was sitting on the sofa the other. Yeah. So Sunday, I think it was Sunday, Monday, Monday. So what's this thing with the Devonish? And she goes, I have no idea. So I Twitter Devonish, and I think, Jesus. He says, What is it? I said, I never you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I like that. <laughs> I thought about uh, saying it last night, but I didn't say it. But um, the fact that the UK Pleasure Boys uh, released more members in the Good Friday Agreement. <laughs> 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 very good yeah <laughs> that, uh, yeah so, but I, I mean do you know what I do I I, I sometimes the, the, the video of it yeah 
Because nothing, there wouldn't be a word about it if there was no videos. Yeah. It would have stayed within that group of, of, of women and men. Let's, not, let's don't forget there was men in the audience. Gay yeah. men, obviously, were quite happy to fucking go and watch. Yeah. Um, and so they, it would have stayed in that room. And nobody would have got any shaming or any fucking, you know. But did you find that happens and, every now and again in Belfast in the north? That you'll, every now and again you'll get something like that every few years. Some wee scandal, yeah. There's and it's wee... all sort of sex-based. Because we yeah. we're so, I don't know if it's a Catholic guilt or what it is. But it's like, no, we don't talk about sex. Yeah, about sex, oh, no, 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 no. It's just between no. you and your priest. And I understand. <laughs> 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 saying that now, uh, you know they're, they're, the the photographs that come out of it. So did we see the photographs of the woman holding the fucking no? <laughs> like in this woman's, she's definitely somebody's granny. You know, she's she's, oh my she's God. older, and but and, you know, people again, people are sort of like you know us disgusting. I'm like, hold on a second, yeah. Nobody wants to think about it, yeah. But you wouldn't be here if your granny hadn't been fucked. <laughs> Definitely nobody wants to think about it. Nobody wants to think about it. Nobody, like granny's been fucked before yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if it's, if it's that person's granny, he's getting fucked now, probably. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And I mean, I we, we, we do comedy in, in the Devonish. Uh, we take out our cocks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we do. So the, we, uh, Paddy McDonald runs a gig there. So I saw Paddy put a... Aye. It's a, it's on the same. <laughs> I'm sitting. I'm watching the thing. And I'm going. That's our fucking stage. Oh my <laughs> god! A, so uh, I think the cleaner had a yeah. The, <laughs> the cleaner's still mopping, but it's, <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get mileage out of it for the next. It'll be comedy fucking gold for the next. Oh, every months. every comedian's going to be rushing now this week. So if you're in Laveries or Empire this week, that's yeah. going to be because I was rushing to get on the stage last yeah. night to get it done. Yeah, I was last night. Very good. Yeah, good crack. Yeah, uh, yeah. Queens is always good. It was it was a quieter one last night. But uh, we had, yeah, great lineup. So we had uh, Teresa Livingstone doing the uh, the musical act. So you definitely, if you get a chance to go and see her, go and see her. She's very okay, good. Yeah. She, uh, I love watching her every time she plays. She's fucking, she's classy, because she's a great eight piano player, like sort of thing. You know. Yeah. She, I think she was a music teacher, and she does a bit of material about being a music teacher. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what she used to do to try and get the kids on board. <laughs> I swear yeah. to God, every time I watch it, it'll be fucking stitches. So, yeah, it was really good. Um, but yeah, so uh, your your the reason we got you back, uh, I wanted to get you back, was because uh, a bit of a tour happening, a bit of a yeah, yeah, bit of a hitting the road again, eh? Yeah, well, we're when do we? Well, uh, you were in Daly's on Saturday night, yeah, uh, or Ophelia's Loft, officially it's called Ophelia's Loft, yeah. But uh, so shout out to Matt and Owen who run uh, Ophelia's. But yeah, so that's, yeah. that's it was it was lovely for me to be there because I'm normally comedy club mode in that room. Yes, yes. So the watch it was it was it was lovely to have that. Yeah. So um, but yeah. I converted quite a few people. Um, I know you have. I appreciate it. They were uh, yeah, very impressed. Very, very impressed. Again, it was the... And which it always gets me every time you play is the sound you get for two people. Right. Like, mm. it's so impactful. It's, like, so powerful. Yeah. Uh, and it's not about being turned up loud or anything. I mean, it's actually... Because the, my uncle was with me and he was like... We, we, I was talking to him about the noise you can create when there's two of you hmm. you had a support act there was four of them yeah couldn't create what you two did yeah and my uncle was like even if you were to add a bass player to it where would they go yeah well every, that's every note you filled every note every gap there's no gaps for a bass player in there yeah. so that's a testament to yourself but well, um so yeah i mean full on as always yeah but good. you're ready for how long you're going on the road for a while now you're going to go for we go so with with another couple of get we, we decided to do some Irish dates mm -hmm. before we hit the UK. So the UK is starting on the sixth of March. Okay, starts with because we do have a lot of uh, we actually nearly have more listeners uh, across the water, uh -huh. uh, and we do here. So we sort of sort of almost an equal match. So give us the list. I, I don't know if you have the list there, but no, I have, where he's going I, to? I have it. I have it in my head, but it might not be in order. So we do Glasgow, Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And then Montrose. Where the... Exactly, right. Okay, Montrose. So Montrose is a wee town up almost in between Edinburgh and Aberdeen. Right, oh, so right, on okay. the middle, right there on the coast. Mm -hmm. Equidistant, as, as, um, oh, I love it. Yeah. as um, Alan Partridge would say about... <laughs> Norwich. <something>. About Norwich. <laughs> 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 right? So... Um, uh, so yeah, so then we go up to Montrose. We got invited to Montrose years and years ago, and I'd love to do this. I don't know. I don't know how it would work if you if it's a comedy thing that could happen. I'm sure it could, but we need to start going out to the sticks more. Yeah, and not just playing 
Glasgow and Edinburgh and Newcastle and mm-hmm. London and Manchester and all this. Mm-hmm. Although we're playing all those places as well. Because those places, much like Lurgan and much like Oma being out of the way, um, tend to get ignored and bypassed altogether. But they're devoid and starving for culture. Yeah. And we have found that going to Mother... We had this booking agent used to slag us off at London. London booking agent, um, very big to do and all the rest of it. I said, what the fuck are you going to Montrose for? <laughs> and he said, do you know why? Because they're paying us and they want us to come. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty simple formula, in fairness. Like, yeah. <laughs> how do we get you here? Pay, you know, and then you turn around, you go to Manchester and because they're getting fucking swamped, you're getting paid a third as much as... Yeah. You turn around and ask the people in, in, out there and they go, would you give us this? And they go, no bother, there you go. We, we kind of felt the same with the comedy club years ago. It was like people were almost... Well, the acts used to feel when they came to Oma in the comedy club, the acts used to say, like, you, you actually feel like the people are appreciative of you being there. Because, because you went it's, to it's it. Because it, is, yeah. it is a place that nobody comes to sort of thing, you know, and now it's obviously established. But yeah. in the early days, it was like, oh, thanks so much for coming. You know, yeah. Even though they paid in, they're almost thanking them as well, you know. So well, 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 that's about, we, we have found that. and We have a couple of gigs that we play when we do the UK. Regular, like, um, so we, we play Montrose, would be one of them, Lamington Spa, which is just outside Coventry, not far from Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Nobody goes to Lamington Spa, they go to Birmingham, right? But we go Brilliant. to Lamington because we have a lot of, lot of Birmingham listeners, by the way. So if you're listening, listen to Birmingham, yep. get there you go, out to the Lamington Spa. Spa. We're playing yeah. St. Patrick's Irish Club out there, um, and um, there's a guy out there who runs a record shop, Stuart Smith. He runs Seismic Records in Lamington Spa, and he got on to us right early, like our first album. He was right. a fan. He's just one of these sort of, he runs a record shop, so he knows yeah. everything that's going on. Yeah. And he got on to us, and whenever we were organizing our first UK tour way, 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 way back, he booked us. Right. And I would say he was the first booking we ever had where we got looked after properly, where there right, was okay, a, yeah. a backstage and a writer uh-huh. and a hotel and and all this, and um, Stuart's been booking us ever since. But consequently, he's built, for us keep, uh, for, because we kept going back, and because he kept booking us, mm. we've built up this big fan base. So really? we go in just big, big rooms, and we pack them out, and, nice. them, and it's just, and Montrose would be, although Montrose is a smaller place, but again, the Bonnevilles coming to Montrose would be one of the highlights of the year. Everyone comes to see us. Maybe. And we love it. And that's, I mean, that's, well, that's obviously a testament to Stuart, but also a testament to your sort of dedication of, of going there and keep going there. Um, well, and it just shows you it does pay off. Like, And that's why we're, I'm glad to see you're going around the, the yeah. around the north to try and get as many in as you can. Exactly. Um, yeah. Because that's, that's, that is back to the what the, the old school way of doing it. I'm actually in the middle of Bruce Springsteen's fucking autobiography uh, and him talking about going to the, the, the pubs for years and years of just like shitty gigs and shitty and just having to really struggle through it. Um, yeah. But then, you know, yeah. as time goes on, they get better, you know, yeah. the music got better. And, you know. But but that was, that was always with us now, whenever I started the band back in, we don't even know what year it was. We think it was 2008 or something like that maybe even earlier um i kind of looked at who we were what type of music i was making what mm-hmm. type what, what was our what re, what was the reality right of, of our potential and the reality was we didn't have a record label we had no backing we had no management we had no booking agents we had no money we had nothing mm-hmm. so i started a record label myself and and and, and really, I released albums from a band in Japan called The Roots, and a band in Detroit, and a band, I did a couple of compilation albums and all that. Got myself a a pub um, a distribution deal for the label, and then by the time I got to the Bonneville's first album, I had all that in place, and I was able to then get a review in Hot Press and a review in Melody Maker right. and all this sort of mm-hmm. stuff. And um, but I knew. We weren't cool or trendy. We were from right, North, okay. North of Ireland. You know, but you're from, from Lurgan. Um, <laughs> even worse. <laughs> even worse. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Mickey. <laughs> you're, you're from Lurgan. You're playing a type of music that is not, you know, wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so the reality was that to get any inroads mm. was 
just go on the road. And the but the bands that we looked up to were all road dogs, all these American bands, Leflin Cruiser and Bob Log and Black Diamond Heavies. Maybe you guys don't know about these bands, but there were the bands that were kicking around the Soledad Brothers and bands like that. Um, all come out of various blues scenes out of Detroit and out of the uh, uh, um, Texas and right, Scott okay. H. Byram mm-hmm. and the guys like that. These guys were all road dogs. They were all label mates of ours mm-hmm. and pals of ours. Now we gig with these guys and tour with these guys. But we were watching, I was watching what they were doing and they were just gigging, 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 yeah. gigging, gigging. And I went, I'm going to do that. If I do that, we can make a go of this. Yeah. But if we try to go down the industry route, we, we it would never happen for yeah. us. I, I didn't feel anything. And, and I mean, there's, the other thing, obviously, as well is, <clears throat> is did you like how did you come? How did you embrace the the, the limitations of a two piece? Do you know in that sense there are physical limitations, obviously, of, yeah. of what you can do because then you have to do. I'm not saying Chris doesn't do that, no. but I'm saying you have to do everything in that sense. You know, in regards to the the, the melodies, the guitars, the fills, and then yeah. the bass sort of rhythm and stuff. I mean, was that was that on purpose or was that just uh, like did you go fuck it? I don't want a bass player. No, no, no. I wanted the bass player. Right. Okay. And I started to, a two. It was another guy actually started the two piece a guy called Tommy Malloy, brilliant drummer out of the town. And we had a we we, we tried it together and it, it, it personality clash. It just wasn't going to work. And um, I pulled the plug, but un- unfortunately, just for Tommy, just as we pulled the plug, mm-hmm. he was always trying to get us to do the two piece, and I was always trying to get us to get a bass player in. Right. Um, but he, to his credit, was going, no, 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 keep, keep it going, and we're, we're, we're see if you can figure it out. Just as I figured it out, we sort of fell out. Right. So, I had a half of the first album written, and. Uh, maybe not half, but anyway, the f- like Good Suits and Fighting Boots would have been written okay, by right, then, right. and yeah. Army of One would have been written by then, and Hard Tail Lurking Blues would have oh, been okay, written right. by then. So, big tunes, like. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, even if you look at the guitar playing on Army of One versus Good Suits and Fighting Boots, mm-hmm. it's a complete, it has two different styles, to be fair, but it's completely different guitar playing. Yeah. That's a year of right, trying okay. to figure out how to be in a, a two piece. Right. That's the time. <laughs> okay. So the first army one is just a punk. Thing. How many variations do you have, like at your disposal? If you had to change in an album, could could you do it for ten tracks? Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Every bit different, or every yeah. guitar sound different. Or, okay, it could, it could too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. you have to change your style and all that sort of stuff. Well, it's, well tuning, figuring out all different types of tunings and yes, stuff helps. So you know, yeah. open tunings and drop these and open open this and open that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so experimenting, but. The big thing that does it is must do. You're out in the road, you're playing in front of people, you must figure this out. Well, that's what I was going to say to you, because, I mean, when you go out in the road, you don't have the comfort of the studio. No. You don't have the comfort of layering. You don't have the comfort of, well, no. I'll, I'll add a wee solo on this, or I'll add a wee fill into this, or, you know, you yeah. fucking have to do it all. <laughs> Which we see on stage, and you know, you yeah. do give it your all, but, uh, I mean, it, it's obviously at this stage the game. You're coming on to album number five, I do believe. That's right. Uh, oh. I heard one of the new songs on Saturday night. Very excited. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Very, yes. Uh, I can't wait for that. To, mm. uh, and I, I told you already, but Reflex Liar shouldn't be on it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> noted. Take it on. No fanboy moment when you're yeah. having a go with your fucking idols going, don't yeah. be putting that song on that album. It's <laughs> a bonus yeah. track. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, so, I mean, are you at the point now, Do you, are you in writing mode or are you all? Yeah. Always in writing mode. Do you, like, are you always thinking of ideas, or do you, do you take a break, or do you like? I would sometimes actively have to sit myself down and go write the, for stand up. I'm going. I need to write something here. Yeah. So, do you get to that stage, or does it just come to? You? No, I get. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, with regards to sitting down and writing, yeah, you do. You know, if they go right, I need to. Did I, you get I have to do it right now. I've got yeah. I have a few tracks that we've gone into the studio with. I've got the raw idea for it. We've figured out the bones of it, but mm-hmm. there still needs to be a lot of more meat put on there. So we've decided this week to not go into the studio because we've next week and then we have a weekend off. Then the following week we go to England and okay. we'll go to Scotland that we start the tour. So we've got the, so this week is me trying to f- flesh out those tracks. So yeah, I do I just sit down and go. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do this. If I mm. can, but but. 
I heard a great phrase, and it was, it was, what was it? It was, she was, it was, it was someone like Joni Mitchell or someone like that, and they were talking about the modern music industry. This is just a few, a few months ago, and one of my regular rants about Spotify and the, mm-hmm. the, the splits, the streaming splits that we we get that we don't get paid. Um, and she come up with something where she 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 phrased it beautifully. She says, "As a person who sometimes has to let a failed lie follow for a while." Right. And I understand that. Okay. Because the modern industry is you all the time. Yeah. All the time. Like the Beatles all the time. Mm-hmm. Bum, 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 bum. Never quit, never quit, never quitting. Mm-hmm. But as an artist, that's not the way you're wired. You could go for years without having to, to make a painting or without doing a sculpture or without writing a song or singing a song or doing whatever it is that you do. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, boom, get this flash of inspiration and activity comes out of you. And I would be a bit like that, but I would be gathering up ideas all the time. I've got a book and I'm constantly writing on it. Right, okay. If I'm watching a movie and somebody says a line out of the movie, I'll go, oh. Yeah. And that could find its way into a song about it. And then whenever I come, I feel like I have to start writing. But now at the minute, I'm in a place where I have to write to finish uh, the well, record. Do, do you have a, a, are you given anything like a deadline or anything they got? No, or? Deadlines are good. Self-imposed deadlines. Like, oh, okay, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nobody over your shoulder going, no, you did have this. No, like, okay. no, I want, um, uh, yeah, no, so, 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 I have deadlines in my head, like, but yeah. Does yeah. Chris do any songwriting? No. Thank fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you haven't heard him sing. It's that's, a good... a, that's the thing. I would love to see. We, I'd love to come in someday. There's a back end of vocals, Michael, uh, we, Mike set up for him, and I think, oh, Chris is going to sing. We tried it once. Whenever I think it was on the. Can film. he it, sing? No, no. Okay. It was the first. Al- <laughs> it was the first album, and um, I can't remember what song it was. But I says, no, no. I want, I want sort of like a background vocal, but I want. Sort of not a choir or whatever, but like mm-hmm. four or five. I want to sound like four or five people. So coming up to the mic here, and right, okay. I'll do the other three voices over his overdubs. You jump in, and he went, "I can't sing." And he <laughs> went, "I'm not asking you to sing. It's not really singing. It's more shouting." And he went, "I can't shout either." It went, <laughs> I says, "Everybody can sing and shout." I says, "Don't worry about. It. Let's go." And we just took, and I just stopped the tape. I went. You're right, you cannot fucking sing. <laughs> or shout. Or shout. You're done. <laughs> and he was never asked again. <laughs> well, we, we we should point out, actually, that the, the, both of you are supposed to be here today, obviously, but uh, Chris yeah. has got he can't uh, it, yeah. adult responsibilities. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, I know that feeling, yeah. But, so, I mean, then you're you're now, are you saying you're, you're halfway through an album? Five songs, no? Five, six songs? We, well, we've, we, no, well, I wouldn't say halfway through because... We've about six or six, well, maybe six. I, I always just round it round to ten for an album, but it could be an twelve. Album, could an be album could be, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I would say ten would yeah. be the number, yeah. but um, and I think the label sort of go with ten as well. That's what they're kind of looking at. But I think we're probably about seven or eight down. But um, th- there's still a lot of meat to go on there. There's most mm-hmm. of the lyrics are done on those ones. There'll be overdubs to go on, and I'll be trying different. I want to try a few different things this time, a few different sounds, and a few different. So, when it comes to the music videos, what about a UK Pleasure Boys version? I've got the song right for it. Have you? Oh, I. You could have me, yeah. Kieran Bartlett, Dave Elliott, Mickey, Geddes. The Boners. <laughs> the Boner Brigade. <laughs> the Boners. <laughs> the, bo- the UK Boner Boys. <laughs> Uh, the UK displeasure, displeasure boys. Yeah. Uh, no, that will be yeah. Music videos and all that. I mean, that's that's the other thing. I mean, especially in, in today's climate, you know, you're going to have to have yeah. wins and all that sort of stuff. And it's, you know, I don't know what you're like, but I fucking detest it. Yeah. I'm terrible at self promotion, which is why nobody knows who the fuck. I am. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I don't. You know, I, I'm I'm so bad at that. And uh, I would imagine it, you'd be similar in that sense because yeah, you know much, it's. Yeah. I, I sometimes have the fear of. Uh, I actually sp- spoke to uh, uh, a comedian last night, Martin Angolo from Dublin, and we were chatting about the amount of people come up to. You. Like he 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 was recently in a TV show. If you haven't seen the Last One Laughing um, on Amazon Prime, go watch that. Uh, and he was on that, and he's now getting. He was. He said he was in. He was in a pub, and he just finished his gig. And the guy came up. Went, oh my god! I can't believe it's you. Oh, lovely to meet you. When are you when are you playing here? And he was like, I just finished the gig. <laughs> 
they had no idea. And so yeah. we were talking about how do you get the word out to people? Because every time you put the word out, sometimes you think, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm blitzing people here. And, you know, people are going to get fed up hearing about me putting another. But then again, but, then you get the other side of people going, I didn't know you were coming. You know. But, but isn't, isn't, that, isn't that the problem? So, again, it's like that thing, you've got to let a feel they follow. You can't just be constantly pushing. Mm. And if you do, you as an artist, you feel fake. That's absolutely, You feel like yeah. you're puking people. Yeah. You feel it, you, you know, and then the algorithm gets changed that many times a year, every year. Well, I don't know how often they do it now. They just changed the Instagram one, apparently. And the first thing I come up on one of my feeds was how to make the algorithm work for you. You do this, do that. And I go, that's a fucking job. <laughs> you get a PhD to fucking I, put I, up, I don't to post a story. I don't to do that. <laughs> you know, but... Um, apparently I'm on TikTok. <laughs> Go and follow me on TikTok. We, uh, we, I had we, to. We, we tried a TikTok. It's we had the count is there, but Jesus Christ! Yeah, I had to uh, uh, delegate that to my daughter. Yeah, <laughs> so, very wise. So she's in charge yeah. of my TikTok. Yeah. Don't be a messenger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a, but it is, and it's that currently. But I think we maybe have it easier in that sense of the social media thing for clips because it's it's spoken word and it's kind. Of, you know, as a band, you you, you know. You, you're 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 hitting them obviously with the music and the sound, but then you have to be visually. You know us just standing there in a hoodie, stand chatting. Our our mm. our content is our words. Yeah. But for you, it's, it is the words, but it's also the melody, and then it's the look, and then well, it's the vibe of the. You, the, know, you the, have a lot to do in a thirty-second reel for the, a band. Well, well, there is, but the, 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 yeah, a hundred percent. But also to make it, I would say, even more complicated for a band. We're not a battalion. We're not an army. We don't live together. Yeah. You can't, you know, they, they'll go three times a day. Well, what am I supposed to do three times a day? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm doing the dishes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've, I, I, I do these things on, on our our socials. Like I was telling you the last time, one of the things that I'm pushing is a, a Telegram channel. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's not many on it. There's 60 or 70 people or whatever. But I put everything up on there first. Right, okay. And... Like, so yesterday morning, usually Monday mornings, so I try to do it, we chat to the camera, just go, this is what we're doing. But the reality is, unless you've been doing something, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, fucking, you, yeah. You know, well, you, so, same for a podcast, you know, you, if you didn't have a, an exciting life to yeah. live, what could you talk about, you know what I mean? If you weren't gigging and all yeah. the time and constant, yeah. yeah. Well, it's the same as us. And we, if it wasn't so for we big, weren't if, gigging. if it wasn't for big flappy cocks, what else would I have to talk about, you know what I mean? If it well, wasn't... <laughs> That's a way about that, yeah. <laughs> um, but you no, know, there is, there is that thing where you need to have sort of, and then as you say, you're back to the thing. Am I puking people? Or am I? Am yeah. I, am I boring people? You know, and that's, yeah. You know, so it's yeah, it's a constant struggle. So uh, I, I know the likes. I I admire the likes of Shane, uh, Shane Todd, and 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 Colin yeah. Geddes, and that because oh yeah, they're, they're so prolific and so yeah, um, uh, efficient with it. Like really mm. getting it out there, and it, it pays off. I mean, you can see the numbers and clearly. Stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I do always be jealous. I'm going. Well, number one, I wish I had the time. And our our pro problem is with this podcast is I have all the time, or I have all the knowledge of how to make clips, but no time. Aye. Mickey has all the time, but no knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so we are <laughs> nor fucking, want. We are the, nor want to. Uh, <laughs> we are the perfect mix. I tell you, yeah. of fucking, but I mean, because I'm dealing with that fucking literally a genius. Don't hope he's not watching this because I yeah. don't like compliment them mm -hmm. um but you know when you're looking with that there, there's about fucking 10 viral clips every episode yeah do you know what I because mean? that comes yeah. constantly fucking going yeah um so yeah that's, that's an ongoing complaint to have but well we we, we had a we, there was a guy actually uh, maybe he watches this or listens to this probably not because it's a long shot but he it's again it's a part of the I had to shut down all our messaging platforms like ever you message us now on, mm -hmm. so it's just like email us Oh, really? We can't message you back. We've got too many means of getting to us. Yes. And then if I go, oh, that guy, I can't remember. So this guy reached out and he said he's he wants to get into the whole thing, the, the mu music industry thing. He's a filmmaker, okay. but he wants to sort of reach out. He says, let's see, you're going on tour. Would you be able? Would I be able to come with you? And at the time, I was going, I seriously doubt it. You know, we don't really have a budget for that, but leave it with me. We can figure it out. Mm -hmm. So... You know, we've got the tour booked and we're looking at it and I go, I wonder, could we bring him? I'm going to have a wee, see if I can have a chat with him, see what this dude needs. And mm -hmm. I mean, even if you're not paying anyone, bringing someone on the day, on, still, on, yeah, on the road with you is £150 like a day. Yeah. 
you know, it's a grand and a half over a 10 day tour, mm -hmm. do, you know, and that's not a lot of money, but we don't have a lot of money. Yeah, so it's yeah, all yeah, a part absolutely. of it. Yeah. It's all a part of the thing. But so going, okay, well, maybe, maybe we could do this. This might be something we should think about. Because he said something about, and I'll do your social media film, I'll handle your daily clips and I'll film this and I can do that. And then at the end of it, we could do a video and do a thing. And I, well, do you know what? That would be could, okay. Yeah. We could maybe do this. Can I find that guy's fucking contact details? Oh, no way. No clue gone through the e two email addresses, oh. the the Facebook Messenger, the Instagram Messenger, uh, all of them. Well, hopefully he's he's a he's a listener well, or he or she is a <laughs> yeah. listener uh, and they get in contact. Yeah, so please send send out the pigeon again, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> see, that would be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, uh, um, just on that. Uh, yeah, that's so that's the thing with the, with, the, with the socials. You know, I can do. You can do so much. Yeah, and, that's uh, it. You know, and and you're right, Colin and and Shane and the boys. They're on top of it, and they've oh, made yeah. it work yeah. for them, and it's it's an absolute credit to them. But um, I don't, I don't think we're kind of really in a place to to be doing it through through what the times at three, four, five times a day. Yeah, or whatever. what have you got? You know, because um, especially when again, and and I'm I'm relating it back to comedy. Comedy is a lot easier in that sense. Yeah. Because even Kieran or or uh, Mickey, I should be doing it now. Kieran, yeah, you know, Kieran yeah. and Mickey or anybody could be just talking to Kieran, you know, because that's what the person who follows Kieran watches him do. Aye, but the person who follows you watches you fucking yeah bust yeah. out powerful riffs and fucking yeah. sing at the top of your voice. Yeah, they're not used to hearing you talk and, and no. may not want to hear you talk. They just no. want to hear you sing. Yeah, you know, and that's the difference. And the, that's where the comedians have it a lot easier. That's why I say it's a lot yeah. more difficult for a band. No, again, it is. You're, you're, you're j just to back your point. You're 100 percent because whenever we're going on, when we're on the road, mm -hmm. you know, when we go on tour, you could you could drops off all day all day long yeah you're you're content. Content. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you're doing it. You're there, yeah. here's the venue here's the saying let's go for a walk around. Yeah. do we walk, walk arounds and people like that and whereas you washing dishes me washing, not, me washing dishes no. looking at although if you did it in your cakes just start, you know what I mean? well apparently you're coming a bell faster well. <laughs> although they might be quite <laughs> disappointed if they came around the front that's all i'm gonna say uh, <laughs> i wouldn't be advise you to take them off no no, <laughs> no. you wouldn't want to scald your willy <laughs> no no <laughs> Fry like we don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's fucking wild. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, the 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 the, the UK thing. Then you're mm. you're what to say? UK, the, the it's is it eight dates? Is it six? Not because twelve. I think. What was it? Oh, so we go Glasgow. Glasgow, Edinburgh, Montrose. <laughs> well, that's, where, well, that's where Montrose is where we got. Glasgow, we're Edinburgh, back to Montrose. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We go back to there. <laughs> then we go down to Newcastle. We play a great venue down there, a place we've been playing for years as well. And the Clooney, um, and I think then we go down to Leamington and Manchester, mm -hmm. and we then we have a gig in Harlow. A great guy, Adam Smith, has been booking us for a while now. Brilliant fella. Uh, and then London, it's nearly sold out, and then down to Folkestone, another one of these off Maybe. the beaten track places that Maybe. just just a great guy, Chris, um, and uh, he he brings us down. And then across to Brighton, and then that's I think that's them all. I think that's just done. You'll be looking forward to it. Do you do you look forward to that getting away and doing it? It is a hard slog because it's not like no, uh, you know, you're not you're not Coldplay, so you're not being fucking no. private no. jets everywhere, and you're driving physically yourselves, stepping yeah. up and doing all the you yeah. Know. We we uh, Audrey comes with us. Um, she's our Audrey Audrey Extraordinary, we call her, and <laughs> she she comes and she's our sort of road manager, and she comes and does the merch and does. Uh, helps us out, but um, it's, a great, it's a great help because mm -hmm. if someone on the merch is just makes the difference. Yeah. Like, so w w if we do the merch, and we do, we so we go down to the merch at the mm -hmm. end of the gig, and someone buys a t-shirt or a record, asks you to sign it, and you start talking to them for five minutes. Meanwhile, there's a queue of people looking to uh, buy, and yeah. they they just drift off. And we can't afford that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> so Audrey is great. Um, she's been coming on the road. She's been traveling with us for years now. Um, oh, it'll not be long till you're doing a VIP meet and greet package. On oh, the next geez, I, I, I must have tricked there. I should have been doing that already. But yeah, no, yeah. Um, you do the Kieran Bartlett one and do a fucking raffle at your gigs. Do a raffle? <laughs> Did he? <laughs> Typical West Belfast. Like, <laughs> had to get a raffle. Like, Is it yeah. for charity? No, <laughs> it's for me. It's for him. <laughs> 
We still slag. It was years ago, like, but we still slag about it. Oh, <laughs> that's a fucking great idea, actually. <laughs> we rambled them we, 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 Where did we get asked? We got asked to do that one time. Would you mind stopping the show halfway through so we could do the raffle? <laughs> Can't remember what that was. I went, no. <laughs> Fuck off. Stamp there, you know what I like covered in sweat. <laughs> Soaking like you yeah. yeah. If, 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 if yeah. you just put your hand in the thing, but five hundred tickets just stick to your hand, yeah, you're that right, fucking yeah. uh so I mean what, this is my second time seeing you in a few months, and both times you had uh amazing support. Yeah. Um so you had Aqua Tafana in uh the Woodville. Yes. And then right. you had uh Anya. And yeah. dailies and fucking amazing both sets both included your daughter on bass that's right um amazing um, nepo, nepo baby i think they call them now <laughs> <laughs> that nepo baby's by her fucking nepo everywhere baby, yeah uh they have yeah well i mean it's it, it's um it must be uh, i was watching you a couple of times just to see because it's like obviously there was nobody else you were watching those days except for her <laughs> but i mean it must be an awful proud thing to, to you know mm. as a musician to watch your daughter do music i mean it must be she's brilliant um is she um it was weird how she, she's always wanted to be a musician. She's always she's obsessed with music. She's always she's. Really? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. W- w- once um, a friend, Richie McGee and, and Lisa. Who mm-hmm. you know, oh yeah, no. Um, we uh, Richie's sister used to run a bar up the town, in Lurgan, and um, we would go up on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, whatever, and we'd you know like summer. My daughter, mm-hmm. she would have been. <clears throat> eight or nine ten years of age that sort of mm-hmm. time and uh there was a there was a pool table up on the mezzanine and so we go up and play a pool and then we'd shout down three stick us on another three pints and then uh, you know <laughs> someone mm-hmm. would bring them up whatever but the, it was the afternoon so the, the, the kids could run in and out and have yeah. a cup yeah. you know a coke and a packet of crisps or whatever which and, by the way i think is a disgrace that that culture is gone aye I think it's a fucking disgrace. I remember being taken to the pub as a child, and there was no—I wasn't drinking, obviously. No. But there was people I met when I was six, seven, eight years yeah. of age that I still know to this day. I love that. I met them in the pub. I loved. It. I was yeah. funny. I was fucking talking about this just the other day with Chris, and I mentioned it on my wee thing yesterday about how much I love pubs, mm-hmm. being a part of my childhood, running at night, and, and now it's almost like a shameful thing or something, or or you're a bad parent. You're being, I, I, I don't know when that shift happened or when that change happened. It was definitely around the, like the late nineties, early two thousands, but there was a, a subtle change where, oh no, I wouldn't be seen bringing the like, children into the pub. The pub. Yeah. And the, your man dad was sitting at the bar, and you'd Absolutely. be running around the car park. <laughs> fucking like, the, 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 the crack you would have as a child yeah. running around and getting fed yeah. fucking coke and bacon fresh. Maybe yeah. that's more than the point why I miss it more. <laughs> yeah. The bacon rashers and the scampi fries. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, there was it was it was something to miss. Yeah. Sorry, that was just a. There was a, but you were saying so you, you, yeah. the kids were in the public and they yeah, were yeah so, so we were upstairs in the mezzanine and uh, there was a jukebox and the tunes were just fucking just banging and everyone was a ki- all killer no filler like Imagine. every you normally on a public ju- jukebox course, yeah, a bar, you get the cheesy you'll get ones a right? song then you get two or three bad ones and one mm. maybe not too but not too bad and then another good one and, you know because yeah. everybody's but but some one of the boys that was playing pool with us and who's on the jukebox today that's fucking class. And I don't know, I says, I don't know, I look down, I went, who's on the jukebox? And I'm, Janie, my wife, shuts up, Summer. Oh, no way. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> so the boy just went, Summer, come here. I said, shut it upstairs, give her a handful of pounds. Just you keep going, love. Just keep going, yeah. Just you, just you keep going. I uh, hear that's, uh, that's a sign of a good parenting uh, yeah. uh, skills but, there. But, but she, she, she was always obsessed with music. And then, I'm sure she won't mind me telling the story, but I did uh, a gig, it been a year and a bit ago now, in the sunflower of this other side project more yes, so folk, yeah. folky sort of music and um a lot about uh, Irish mythology and the lock and things like mm-hmm. that and whatever but um so at a gig in the sunflower and i had uh my cousin laura cure on fiddle joseph toman on on uh, harmonium and piano um he jared on percussion uh, and Summer was asked, would you do bass? And mm-hmm. she, she says, I don't know, really. And she says, yeah, yeah, you'd be great. It'd be fine. We'll, figure, you know, we'll rehearse and we'll mm-hmm. figure it all out. She had a wee wobble. Right. Before. Okay. You know, like a week before, you know, two weeks before. And I said, well, listen, if you're not going to be able to do this, it's game over. You know, I, I can get somebody else in and, yeah. you know, it's an opportunity for you. 
and she went, I don't know, I don't know. And I said, well, okay, well, listen, let, let's just, a couple of days, she went, okay, all right, we'll come back down. I said, come down and mm-hmm. we'll rehearse and me and you will work it all out. And she said, dead on. She was great. It was a mental thing because she was nailing it every rehearsal. And then one day she couldn't hit um, a cue. She couldn't hit. It's just everyone right. just went to shit. Yeah, you just, get, it, you just get one of those days. Just off got one, yeah. And she had, you only ever played a couple of songs with me on stage, you know, in the American bar coming up as a guest to do one or two songs. This was a whole set mm-hmm. with these musicians who were, you know, yeah. and, uh, and Mikey Marmika, who's recording our album, was doing oh, yeah, sound. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, George Hutton, the singer, filmmaker, was filming the gig. And, uh, right. you know, so it was... A lot of fucking pressure, yeah. For something yeah, like so she, I didn't. But, feel, you know, here's the thing, and I would always say this about comedians, I would be uh, more content to hear them worried before the gig. Yes, than for them to walk around cocky and confident. Oh, uh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Oh, I think I think that that grounds you a little bit, but yeah. also gives you that nervous edge that's yeah. sometimes needed to yeah. perform on any kind of uh, medium, whatever it is. Well, completely. I mean, being too cocky is... is they need to be too nervous is bad too, you know, but... Yeah. But, um, she, but it, that was... She figured out, she went, no, no, it'll be fine. And she, there's a, the videos are all on our YouTube and she killed it. Right. And then George... Was putting George Hutton was putting a, a project together for a debut album. It was called Sorsha. And uh, he asked her, would she do bass on it from that gig? And then Anya was advertising for a bass player. And she, someone said to me, what do you think? I says, ask her, just go sit. And then Anya said, I was hoping. <laughs> I was I was actually going to contact you, but I thought it would be a bit much. Brilliant. And Excellent. then, um, so someone said, no, I'd love to do it. And then... Eva at Aquatafana has mm-hmm. asked her, and now she's um another we think. Oh, right, so okay, she's, yeah. she's, she's, she's a great songwriter as well and a singer. Brilliant. And um, so she sent me we tracks and stuff. So I said, listen, birthday present, we'll get you down into Mickey's studio and we'll two songs and we'll pay for it to get recorded for you. Maybe, maybe. We'll just dig into the the the, the family contacts well, to get that's I mean, you know you should you should have her college fund uh, set aside there so this is yeah. her this is her copy yeah this is the kind, no about this me, is her it, education I, you know it gets one, like chris chris says i'll do drums for you no problem don't worry about it right so, yeah. you know so it's all there so um and if she needs any fat male models for the video we close on <laughs> absolutely yeah 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 <laughs> but no i mean i was i, I was i was very impressed uh, uh Thumpingly solid bass playing, which I, yeah. uh, was exactly what was needed there. On, on the she nailed it, like really she, did. And, and the, word, the weird thing was, I know the drummer. That's right. Which was so weird because. But you didn't know he was a drummer. I didn't know he was a drummer. I didn't yeah. know he played in a band. Uh, he, I, I work with him. I'm part of my day job. He's part of a community association, and so I've it's always been meetings and agendas and minutes and all that sort of stuff. And then I walk in, and I was like, "Is that fuck? Is that?" No, it's not. I love it. I was like, fuck it is. Wow. <laughs> no idea. I've been, like, a couple of years I've been working Brilliant. with, like, no idea that he played. And, because, uh, again, the band's from Belfast, aren't they? Or they're yeah, based in Belfast? But yeah. So, again, yeah. I'd never had any thinking. And it wasn't until I looked in, I thought, and actually, the initial thought was, oh, was he just posing as a drum kid to get a photograph? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I just had no link to the, the yeah. you know, I thought he was in the, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it was great to see him as well. But, um, yeah, so they were really, really good. But then, as I say, he's come on then and. Did your thing and yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah. But Aqua Tufana as well. I mean, what, what's the girl's name? Eve is it or Eva Kearney? Eva, what a voice as well, as unreal. well as Anya. I mean, unreal. the voice is unreal. But uh, two different styles, obviously, completely. But completely, yeah. um, the energy on Saturday night was fucking amazing from Anya. Like that good. fucking punk proper attitude too. That oh, was yeah. really really good. She's really she's. It's again, it's one of those things as well. You know, in another, maybe in another era, mm-hmm. that would be a bigger thing than it is. It should maybe it deserves a bit more. But yeah, I, do you think? Well, I mean, I think it's. I think um, finally, uh, it feels for for females in rock. Yeah, it's really, really good time at the moment. And yeah, yeah, some fucking really talented. Um, not all female bands, but you know, female led yeah. bands. You know, they think in a wet leg and yeah, um, English teacher and fucking yeah. the last dinner party and all that. There's so yeah. many fucking really, really good bands out there at the moment that are yeah. being led by. Because then, it, I always, I loved, uh, I had this. Uh, love for Karen O from mm. Yeah Yeah Yes mm. just always was upset I thought she was fucking amazing like because th- to bring that sort of the sexiness not that you're not sexy I'm not saying you're not sexy you know what I mean you are of course you are of course. but you just don't do it for me the Karen O does no. <laughs> 
know, <laughs> not that you should, but you know, but there no. is that, and and that's, but it had to be backed up by music. Of course, you know, no matter what, because otherwise you're into a fucking strip show like a fucking devil. You know, <laughs> yeah. If it's not, if there's yeah. no talent and no actual skill there, there's no point. Just you know. Well, well, well that was all. I mean, all, all, all the all the best female musicians in rock and pop since there was rock and pop always existed on their own merit. Mm, it was absolutely. never. Yeah. It was. It was always a meritocracy in that sense. Yeah. I mean, they had to. They had to swim this. In shark pool of the music Talk industry, yeah, as, but yeah. everybody yeah. has to do that. But they obviously had their own um, uh, issues to deal with that the likes of me wouldn't have to deal with. But um, I ain't thinking about people like you know, Susie Quattro. Yeah, I was, I was just, that's who uh, I was thinking in my head. Know, it's Susie, Qu- Susie Quattro was one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Um, you think of Janis Joplin and all, Jan- yeah. all them fucking all, yeah. all the front women, if you want to say. I I always say front man for. Male or female, mm-hmm. I class the same as human. You know, just a, of course, a, yeah, a front yeah, front, yeah. But yeah, front front woman. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's there's so many over the years. Like I mean, Patti Smith as well. You know, another fucking yeah. absolute hero. One of them. But 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 then I I just thought there was a bit of a lull there for a, a little while, maybe ten or fifteen years there, where it wasn't yeah. really because it's not new to have female front lead singers. Of course, obviously, no. but um, it just seems now that finally they're getting the recognition they should have had for a long time and the men have to take a step back because the talent is there and they're more talented. Yeah. You know, and well, it's, yeah, well, that's it. I mean, as, and as, as I said, I mean, as long as everything's run on a, merit, a meritocracy, it's, it's brilliant because yeah. I think that whenever, especially when you get into things like arts, you know, it's not to say that you can't give people who are maybe marginalized in certain sections of society, give them a, 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 a hand that's a good thing but if you're pushing an art and the art isn't the best yeah oh yeah absolutely oh, no, no, then yeah. you become you see, then it, it, there'd be a danger i think the end of the listener or the viewer whoever it is maybe reaching a conclusion where they're pissed off at the person yeah you know instead of b- being Charmed and delighted. Yeah. They're going, oh, that's not as good as that other thing. And why, why is it, why have I got, yeah. you know. And same with comedy. Same thing applies to comedy or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The, whatever the art I, form I is. Like, yeah. Because, yeah. no, at the end of the day, it, it's good that, you know, we can, we can support everybody. There's room to support everybody. But whenever you're talking about trying to make a living and you're out there, you know, trying to earn, mm. my measure, I should be measured on how good are my songs and how good do I perform them and how, how, how are they recorded and presented? That's it. It could, you know, all the other stuff shouldn't matter. Yeah. And all that stuff being level, it, there's, women are as good as men. Yeah. Men are as good as women. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. women write great songs. Yeah. Men write great songs. So, you know, if you need to kind of maybe clear a space a little bit, maybe because it was a very male dominated, um, industry so if yeah you maybe, it was more behind uh, the scenes it was more male you know like uh, 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 obviously yeah, record yeah, labels yeah. and stuff like that yeah. and, and tour promoters and all that sort of stuff so but if you, now need, to, obviously if you yeah. need to clear it to say well listen let's make this a little bit more female friendly so maybe we can in, invite mm-hmm. our, our sisters into the space and make them feel comfortable in it yeah absolutely. well that's good and that's exactly the same with comedy yeah. you know we were always trying to promote it because there, there is a severe lack of female Thankfully, thankfully, touch wood, they're starting to, you know, yeah. appear in the last yeah. uh, number of years. But I, for for uh, the first maybe eight years, seven years I was doing comedy, I could have on on one hand counted the the female comedians in the north. Yeah, you know that were and, that were constantly gigging. I don't mean somebody just pops up here. Now. I mean yeah. people are constantly gigging. But now it's you know it's dramatically increased, which is great. But it's still not at the point where it needs to be. Yeah. Of that equal footing, but then, but again, and the maybe base at, talent, at, but at the at the at the you know, it's maybe it's the same as in, in in music as well as in rock and especially in rock and roll, you know, maybe at the base entry level, there's more males entering us. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, oh yeah, it's absolutely, at, no, at, absolutely, that was is, the case. Which is, you know, it so wasn't if, women being excluded; it was just the weren't coming forward. The weren't yeah. coming forward. So yeah. then, if we need to consider, how do we? Is is, is there? Why are women not coming forward? Is it because they don't feel? Is it maybe they don't want to? Fair enough. If, mm. Are they not feeling comfortable? They don't want to go in. They feel that space is too this way or that way or one way or the other. Then maybe we need to just. Is there something you can do at that at yeah. that point? But then 
after that, it's a meritocracy. It has to be, the, yeah. The, has the to be best a, have yeah. to just come yeah. to the top. You have to, like, and you have to be run the show that, that's good and it has to be enjoyable because yeah. you're also then, uh, promoter wise, you're thinking of the punters. You want them to come back again to your Ex- venue or whatever the case may be. 100%. So you have to have all that in We don't have public, we, yeah. we don't have the luxury of being able to just throw money at. No. Uh, you know, you have to make your money. I, I know with the, with, the, with the clubs and pubs around the UK and Ireland are having to endure. Mm-hmm. When it comes to getting their bills paid, and it's massive. Oh, they might have, we, yeah. we hear about venues closing down every week. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and it's going to get worse as time goes on. You know, so yeah, yeah. The, the the more we can sort of promote that sort of stuff, and the same for live comedy, live music, or whatever, live drama, even whatever the case may be. Yeah, it's getting the people back out again and involved. But well, listen, we're getting very deep there, and it always happens when you come in here and this thing. Was, Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> stink the place up. <laughs> But it's good. I, I like. I do. I know uh, for our listeners, some people maybe might like to see the behind the scenes of the uh, the business we call show. Yeah. But there, are, there, you know, there are things that happen, and 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 there are practical things that I do like to talk about. So fuck you if you're complaining. <laughs> it's not the BBC. <laughs> no, it's not the BBC. Uh, so what we do normally, we have. Uh, I I've done this for the last couple of guests. So uh, I my daughter had a book, and it was uh, either or questions. For me, uh-huh. oh god! So I'm going to go through them now, and mm. uh, you have to, you have to pick one. There's a lot of them now, so they're going to be quick fire. Quick fire, okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, either or, right? So we'll start with the Stones or the Beatles. Beatles. Is it the raid or the destination? It is. Uh, the raid. Mac or PC? Both shit, Mac. <laughs> Wine or spirits? Spirits. Rich or famous? Rich. BMW or Mercedes? You have to choose? Yeah, uh, Mercedes. Sweet or salted? Salted. Meat or murder? Ooh, meat. God or the Big Bang? God. <laughs> Pepsi or Coke? I'm boycotting both at the minute. That'll do. London, <laughs> London or New York? <laughs> I like, I'm, I'm like, London, London. Nike or Adidas? Nike. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Queer or straight? Queer as fuck. <laughs> Movies or music? Music. Summer or winter? Summer. You have to say summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, left wing or right wing? Left wing. Truth or dare? Ooh, dare. Spirituality or religion? Spirituality. Uh, climate change fact, climate change fiction? Climate change fiction. Climate is definitely changing, so fact. Okay. City or country? Country. Uh, death penalty or life imprisonment? Life imprisonment. Hitchcock or Spielberg? Hitchcock. See the future or change the past? Ooh. I <laughs> <laughs> no. guess everyone knows. See the future or change the past? <laughs> See the future. Okay. Oh, I don't know. That's, that's, <laughs> a, good, that's, that's a good one, right? Uh, yeah. Art or science? Art. Fame or money? I think we've done it already. Yeah. Uh, going out or staying in? Going out. More time or more money? More time. Subway or McDonald's? McDonald's. Lennon or McCartney? Ooh. Oh, God. That's not a good one. I know. Wasn't That's it? terrible. <laughs> uh, McCartney. Uh, mountains or beach? Mountains. Creativity or knowledge? Creativity. Tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. The Wire or Sopranos? The Wire. Money or looks? <laughs> Money. Odd or even? Odd. Starter or dessert? Starter. Adventure or relaxation? Adventure. Telephone or text? Text. Celebrity or artist? Artist. Cremation or burial? Cremation. Thoughts or emotions? Emotions. Slow or fast? Fast. Optimist or pessimist? Optimist. Realist or idealist? Idealist. Head or heart? 
Heart. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> I think it's hundred percent pass. <laughs> you answered all questions. Uh, yeah. So well done. No passes in that round. <laughs> go away. It does get you the spot when it's something fast, doesn't it? It's like a, it's like some sort of fucking psychoanalyst thing. You know, he's like, I go, I am saying these words that I, you know. Oh, you don't know that we're actually going to analyze your results after this, all. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to come up with your personality profile then. Oh my god. Uh, Andy McGibbon, thank you very much as always for coming along. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 you're you have. I'm trying to think what the, the, the chair based name we have for you. We give you the name of last time. The Rockin' Chair. Jeez, how could I forget? Oh, yes. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for coming back. The, the Bonnevilles.com, is that the website? Is uh, the code at UK. UK. So the Bonnevilles.co.uk, go and check out for dates, uh, especially if you're across the water. Yeah. Um, go and see the guys. Um, check out their merch, check out their socials, all the usual. I'll, Shite. Shite. Um, for the people who want to buy our merch, we don't have any. So buy, <laughs> a- buy Andy's merch. <laughs> and and yeah. the next time, if you're wearing it at one of our gigs, we'll sign it for you. There yeah. You go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. And uh, yeah, Good we'll to- see you all again next week. I think we've got another episode coming from uh, Down Under, apparently. I don't know. I mean, it's your guess is as good as mine. Um, I think Mickey is raging that he wasn't at the Devonation Saturday night. So he. <laughs> <laughs> he may be home <laughs> for the next one. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yes, as always, share and share a like. Yeah. Put it out there and do all your fucking social balls and all. Peace out. <laughs>